We've got an update on the injury to Jordan Walker, plus what simple change he can make to avoid such injuries in the future. This is Locked on Cardinals. You are Locked on Cardinals, your daily St. Louis Cardinals podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, Cardinal fans. I'm J.D. Haffern, and I'm a national radio sports anchor, born and raised in the Lou and a lifetime Cardinals fan, and I'm your host for Locked On Cardinals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, covering your team every day. You can follow me on Twitter at J.D. Sports Radio. You can follow the podcast at LO underscore Cardinals. I want to thank those of you who make Locked On Cardinals your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts. You're on iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts. You'll find us also on YouTube. Make sure to like and subscribe and comment. That way you can interact with us. Hit the notification button so you know when new episodes are posted. This is a show serving Cardinal Nation and giving the best fans in baseball all of the info about the birds on the bat. Today's episode is being brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to get started. So the Cardinals finished up their week with a 5-1 and one victory or 5-1 to one victory over the Nationals and went 5-2 and two this week to push their overall record to 9-5, which is the second highest winning percentage in the Grapefruit League behind the Boston Red Sox, who at the time of this recording uh, were tied up in the ninth inning against the Yankees. Um, I do think they ended up going on and losing that game last time I checked, but doesn't really matter. Over in the Cactus League, the Royals are uh, thirteen and two in the spring, followed by the Cubs at ten and six, Dodgers eight and four, and then the Angels have the same record as the Cardinals at nine and five. And uh, what does all of that mean? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> it means absolutely nothing in the grand scheme of things, especially for teams like the Cardinals, who are missing most of their normal starting eight due to the World Baseball Classic. So records, as much as it is, you know, nice to win and everything, the records don't really matter. We're just kind of paying attention to position battles, people getting in shape, what are the rosters going to look like. That stuff's more important than the overall uh, record in spring training. Um, speaking of the World Baseball Classic, how about Lars Newtbar? Is he like the biggest star of the World Baseball Classic right now? Like he's just... All over the place. Here he is right here. Picture on YouTube. There he is. Going all Jordan on us with the tongue. Um, he and Shohei are best buds on Team Japan right now. He's doing the pregame pump-up speeches for the team. He's got all of Japan running around trying to buy pepper grinders. They're bringing them in the stands and going ham with them, just shaking them all over the place. He's batting leadoff and setting the table for their lineup. Uh, had a hit, two walks and two runs scored today against Australia. Uh, I actually saw this picture. It was actually a video, and I took a snapshot of it. Here it is on YouTube of him uh, saying something awesome after the game. I have no idea why the microphone looks so tiny. Like, look how big his knuckle is. Like, his hands, it's like he's got the hands of Andre the Giant in this photo with a little baby microphone. I don't know why they gave him that, but uh, I I'm sure it works fine. But anyway, uh, Lars just becoming a superstar with Team Japan. I was actually talking to friends on Saturday uh, while at the Blues game about it and uh, with some folks online too, how you know the U.S. stadiums aren't going to allow, if you wanted to bring in a, a pepper grinder to the ballpark, they're not going to let you. They're going to say, no, you can't bring that in here. But if they actually sold these pepper grinders at the Bush Stadium team store, the Cardinals can make a fortune. Right? Because, like, we're going to fall for that. We're going to go buy those things. And then here's what you do. This is the scheme, okay? You take that money into the offseason, and then you spend it on bringing his new best friend, Shohei Otani, to the St. Louis Cardinals. That's what you do. You get your ace. You get your left-handed power hitter. Problems are solved in 2024. Somebody run that up to Mo. Tell him it's a good idea. Anyway, the biggest news of the day wasn't exactly the win for the Cardinals, but instead what was going on with the Jordan Walker injury from Saturday. He made a head first slide, in case you didn't hear about this, into second base and then was removed from the game for precautionary reasons. And it appeared that he avoided 
anything serious. So that's great news. A big sigh of relief for the team and for Cardinals Nation. Per John Denton from MLB.com, the 20-year-old suffered the injury on a head first slide into second base on Saturday, but he will not require an MRI and appears to have avoided serious injury. Walker won't play on Sunday, but is expected to be back in the lineup for St. Louis on Tuesday after the club's scheduled day off on Monday. So that was good news. And Jordan even spoke about the injury with Denton uh, later on saying, I'm good. I actually just did some stretching and stuff and I feel fine. The pain was really minimal and him staying down was more toward the cut on his hand. I was hoping I didn't tear it back open. And luckily I didn't, I'm fine. They were just being a little cautious with it. I just jammed it a, a little sliding and they're being cautious. I could still throw and stuff like that. I can't throw today on his off day and I should be fine by Tuesday. And uh, I believe he was going when the, he was doing this part of his uh, speaking with the reporters. Yeah, uh, he was actually off to go hit in the cages, so he was fine to go do that. Now, when I saw Jordan Walker play this spring, first time I saw him play this spring, I noticed that he was sliding head first. It was the first slide I saw him take, and he was diving head first into home plate out of all places. And this was back on March third. So on YouTube, I actually have the proof. I have a, a the tweet that I sent out. Okay, there it is. And I said to uh, who this person who was actually at the game and was filming this video. Uh, I said, do me a favor, tell him to go feet first into home, keep those hands and fingers safer. And the same thing goes for all of the bases, Jordan, because you just risk too much sliding head first. It's also way rougher on your body. Okay. It's not a smart thing to do. Now, back in my playing days, which were, you know, was a million years ago now, but, um, I used to, try to emulate Ricky Henderson. I loved Ricky Henderson, stealing bases, hitting home runs. You know, he, he was a star for those uh, Oakland A's teams in the early 90s, the late 80s and early 90s. And um, I, I would watch him and I'd be like, oh, that's awesome. I, I'll do that. You know, I'll be like Ricky Henderson. And you just don't realize the punishment your chest and your arms and fingers take when you slide headfirst into bases. Okay. Not to mention cutting up your hands, which Jordan Walker has already done, and also cutting up the inside of your uh, forearms by your elbows. Like, I have scars up and down here, not because I've had elbow surgery or anything like that, but it's from sliding head first. It just cuts you up. And sure, the dirt that Jordan Walker is playing on is probably way nicer <laughs> than the fields I was playing on in high school and in college, but at the same time, uh, it cut me up pretty good, and I have these scars from it. It's, it's not a good idea. And it seems that uh, he's not going to be doing any more head first sliding here in the future. Uh, manager Ali Marmol was quoted as saying he'll be sliding feet first. Uh, Jordan did talk about this. Credit to uh, John Denton again for these quotes. Uh, this is from Walker saying manager Ali Marmol has told me about sliding with my feet, too. It's just in that moment. I don't think too much about it because I'm trying to get down there to the base. Maybe one of these day, these early days, I'll come in and work on sliding. I have slid feet first before, and I was talking to Mason Wynn about it. I really think head first is faster, but he talks about how feet first could be faster. So we'll see when I test it out. Can someone also do me a favor and uh, put Jordan Walker in contact with Hall of Famer Scott Rowland so they can have a little chat about shoulder injuries as well um, and what that can do to your career? Because... I personally would much rather have Walker get thrown out at second base, sliding feet first and be healthy, than be safe at second base, sliding head first, and then miss three months with a shoulder problem that then goes on to affect the rest of his entire career. That's just me, though. <laughs> but the good news, again, is that it doesn't appear to be anything serious, and we could see Walker back in the lineup for the Cardinals' next game on Tuesday. Now up next on Locked on Cardinals, we talk about the starting pitching that we saw over the weekend, we had Montgomery, Flaherty, Wainwright, and Mats all in action. They all threw over the past couple of days, so we'll talk about that next on Locked on Cardinals. If you're looking for a delicious treat but don't want all of the fat in the calories, I have a tasty treat for you. That would be Bill Bar. Bill Bar's fantastic. Bill Bar's fantastic, especially for people who want to eat healthier but still have that sweet tooth that a lot of us still have. I, I don't care what diet you're on, at some point, you want to get chocolate in your body, unless you're allergic to the stuff, right? And Built Bar does this fantastic thing where they take a chocolate, 100% real chocolate covered protein bar, and they put it together so it's not all that bad for you. 
It's healthy for you. 130 calories, four grams of sugar with a whopping 17 grams of protein. The 100% real chocolate, fantastic. And so are the flavors. Flavors like churro, peanut butter brownie, which is my favorite. Then the coconut almond. If you like coconut, those are right up your alley. And now you don't have to wait around to actually get a box. For years, we've been talking about having you order at Built.com, which you can still do. But now you can go to Walmart. You can go to Sam's Club and get your Built Bar fixed there, too. At Walmart, go to the pharmacy section, grab yourself a box of Built Bars. They've got the four-bar boxes of cookies and cream, double chocolate, or coconut puffs. If you're close to a Sam's Club, just go ahead and run in there. Grab yourself that 13-bar box with hit flavors like brownie, batter, and churro. And uh, for any updates on any new products, like I know they're pushing the new mint brownie puffs. Those look fantastic. And they come in the green box, so it's all kind of St. Patty's Day looking, which is cool. Uh, be sure to hit up built.com today for all of that information. Now, I think we can all agree that the Cardinals offense is the least of our concerns at this point of spring training. So let's focus on the starting rotation today and talk a little bit about the bullpen, too. But mostly starting pitching, uh, most of them were pitching over the weekend. So let's take you back to Friday night where the big lefty Jordan Montgomery got the ball against the New York Mets, who he faced in his first appearance. And he got roughed up a little bit in that first outing, uh, got tagged for four runs, five hits, including a dinger and just three innings of work. So coming into the game on Friday is ERA was at 12, which is not good. Uh, Friday night, Montgomery looked much better. He extended his outing to four innings. He gave up two runs on three hits. He walked one, but he struck out four. Nothing dominant here. Uh, he hasn't gotten to that level yet from the big guy, but it's trending in the right direction, which is what you want at this point of spring training. Uh, this is just his second appearance, so there's no need to freak out about any of his numbers yet. But because one of the things is, because you got to think about this too. Sometimes they go into these spring training starts and they're not throwing everything that they can. Perhaps they go into the start and say, all right, we want to work on you throwing to the outer half of the plate. So give me one inning where you're focused on that. Or maybe they're throwing on the inside portion. We don't know exactly what they're working on. So sometimes when you see these guys get hit up a little bit, it's not exactly because they're throwing their best stuff at the hitters they're they're working on things at the same time just in game situations so i don't know if that's what's going on with montgomery but it could be so keep that in, in your back of your mind when you when you watch these games and sometimes maybe you're like why is he doing that that could be the reason why but it's a positive sign to see that things got better you know that's what you're looking for he retired the first seven hitters he faced before giving up all three hits in a span of four batters but his overall numbers, they're not going to stand out to you and go like, ooh, that's really good. Because they're not. They're just eh. six runs, eight hits, and seven innings so far for Montgomery this spring. Six strikeouts. His ERA is at 7.71. So what you're thinking about here is just him improving with each outing leading up to opening day. And that's what he did here. So that's the positive take I'm going to have on what I saw from Jordan Montgomery. Uh, it was all lefties after him uh, for the Cardinals on that game. Uh, lefty prospect Matthew Libertor came in following Montgomery. He allowed two runs, one of which was unearned following his own throwing error, so he can only get mad at himself. Uh, through three innings of work, he's had a pretty solid spring so far. Uh, 1.80 ERA over five innings, just four hits, one earned run, three strikeouts, and most importantly, I'll always say this, no walks. Matthew Libertor throwing strikes is very good. That's what you want out of him. You want him aggressive in the zone. You want him attacking hitters. You want him to trust his stuff and go after people. And he's not walking people. He's not putting unnecessary pressure on himself uh, by putting the people on the bases and not earning their way on. So I like what I see so far from Libertor. I do not expect him on the Cardinals roster. I expect him to go down to Memphis and be one of their top starters. Uh, on Saturday, you had Jack Flaherty making his second start of the spring against the Astros, while Adam Wainwright got the start for Team USA in the World Baseball Classic against Great Britain. Uh, let's start with Flaherty here, okay? Made his second start of the spring, second start against the Astros as well. Not quite as dominant as the first outing. Uh, he worked four innings, allowed two runs on five hits. He only struck out two. But again, I'll harp on it, did not walk a batter. And most importantly, he came out of this game healthy, which is what you're really concerned about with Flaherty, right? Uh, Flaherty's numbers through two starts are seven innings, three runs, six hits, one walk, seven strikeouts, solid numbers, solid numbers. And again, he's healthy. And that's what you really are, are working for is like, let's get Jack throwing well, but also be healthy. 
going into the season. So far, that's been the case. Unfortunately, in that game, the offense couldn't muster up much, and they uh, dropped that game to the Astros by the score of 3-2. to two. Adam Wainwright had a rough couple of outings with the Cardinals before he headed off for the World Baseball Classic, where he got the start against Great Britain on Saturday. And uh, it wasn't it wasn't the best beginning for Adam. First batter of the night was the Dodgers' Trace Thompson, who, if you're unfamiliar, is the brother of Golden State Warriors star Clay Thompson. And he took Wayno's curveball over the wall for a solo shot. And I think we all kind of felt that knot in your stomach where you're like, oh, gosh. For one, you don't want to see your guy struggle on the world stage. It's different if Wainwright's giving up taters in spring training games when he's doing it at the World Baseball Classic in front of 40-something thousand people at Chase Field in Arizona, and you've got the world watching. It's a little bit like, oh, I don't want him to get embarrassed out here. Um, Second, we want Adam to be the solid number four and number five in this rotation for the Cardinals in his final year in the big leagues. We don't want to see this guy struggle, right? So um, he gives up the, the home run, and after that, Smooth sailing, though. He, he looked good. He settled in nicely. Goes four innings, allows the one run on five hits, which is something that is going to be an Adam Wainwright thing. He's not there to strike a lot of people out. There, People are going to get hits off of him. But he did strike out four. He walked just one. And that's the Wainwright you wanted to see. Again, progressing from being kind of bad in those first couple outings with the Cardinals in the spring, now at the World Baseball Classic and pitching against some of the best hitters in the world. And looking pretty darn good while he did it. Um, so that was that was good to see out of Wainwright. And he looks good in the red, white, and blue, doesn't he? Uh, Golden Auto Show in full force for Team USA. Goldie was batting third and went one for three with a walk and three runs scored. While cleanup hitter Nolan Arenado went three for five with two RBIs and a run scored as Team USA went on to win that game six to two over Great Britain. I'm sure Goldie was giving Arenado uh, some grief, though, because twice he knocked in Goldschmidt, who was on first base at the time, so he's making Goldie run all the way around the bases, which is exhausting. Uh, I used to have a cleanup hitter, uh, our catcher. I would bet, I would bet third. He was uh, our best hitter. Would bet cleanup, and constantly, I would get a walk or a single or something, and this dude would lace one into the gap or down the line, and I'd have to run all the way around the bases, and you'd just be pooped by the time you did. He did it twice to Goldie. Uh, in this one. And uh, one thing else that stood out to me in that World Baseball Classic game, can somebody get the clip to Jordan Walker of Goldie sliding into first base feet first to avoid that tag on the air and throw in the third inning? That would be much appreciated. Thank you very much, because that's how we want you to slide. Uh, Steven Matz was on the bump today against the Nationals, and his outing, pretty impressive once again. So we'll talk about it next on Locked on Cardinals. The midway point of the NBA season has come, and uh, now is the perfect time to be downloading the FanDuel America's number one sports book because new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back if your first bet does not win. You download the FanDuel Sportsbook app, which is safe, secure, and easy to use. Then you can bet on everything from the money line to point scores and three-pointers drained. Plus, FanDuel will let you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with the same game parlay. You make a bunch of smaller bets in the same game, and as the game goes on and you accumulate wins because you've like hit that particular bet, uh, the chances that you getting a bigger payout at the end continues to increase. Uh, just a good way to make a full game more interesting than just waiting on what the final score is going to be because of the spread. Just makes the game more fun. So don't miss the chance to get your no sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. If the Cardinals get a healthy Steven Matz this year, which is not something that is guaranteed because he's had health problems throughout most of his major league career, but when he is healthy, the man looks good. And so far this spring, Matz has looked really friggin' good. Uh, first outing against Houston, he throws three no-hit innings. He strikes out four. It was as good as I've seen Steven Matz throw since he's put on a Cardinals uniform. Then today, not quite as clean, but still, you had to like what you saw because uh, the most part of it was pretty good. Uh, Matz goes three and two-thirds today, five more strikeouts, which is huge. He walks three. 
which is a big no-no, obviously, but allowed just one run on three hits. So when he did get himself into trouble with the walks, he was able to work his way out of it. Uh, that one run coming on a solo shot that he gave up today. And after the game, Matt's even admitted to not having his best stuff, saying this to Cardinals beat writer Rob Raines. Today was a little bit different scenario for me than my first outing when everything felt really crisp. My stuff wasn't as sharp, but those days happened a lot throughout the season. I was happy with the way I was able to stay with the pitch clock and execute pitches. And uh, he also went on to talk about how having runners on base isn't such a bad thing in spring training because it's kind of good because they can work on this stuff. This is his quote. It's good to run with some traffic on and get used to that pitch clock with runners on. It was all good stepping stone for me today. A lot of times in the season, you don't have your best stuff, and you have to figure out a way to make pitches and limit the damage. Uh, Matt's numbers throughout two starts so far is uh, six and two-thirds innings, one run, three hits, nine strikeouts. Speaking of strikeouts, closer Ryan Housley looked good again today. He strikes out the side in his lone inning of work. Jordan Hicks. Jordan Hicks, everybody. That's the guy we want to see. Had a rough spring so far, but today... Strikes out uh, the side in his one inning of work. Uh, also, Drew Verhagen, Verhagen still, uh, after being a bit of a punching bag last year for, for a lot of pundits, continues to look strong this spring. You remember he had a hip surgery and basically was hurt pretty much all year last year. Even the games he was fighting through the hip injury. So gets surgery, gets it cleaned up. Hasn't allowed a hit or a run in his three innings of work so far, which is great to see after signing him to a two-year deal. So all in all, you got to be encouraged on what you saw from uh, the pitching this weekend. Flaherty is healthy. Montgomery was better. Mats has been fantastic. Wayno looked vintage for Team USA. Now on Monday's show, we're going to focus uh, a little bit more on what's going on with the offense. Okay, because we got to talk about some guys. There's some ups and there's some downs happening on this Cardinals roster right now, and uh, you know we can't sugarcoat things. Some of the guys that we were hoping that would have better springs. Have disappointed, and we gotta we gotta talk about it. That's what we gotta do, and that's what spring training's for. Kind of weed out some of the dudes who don't belong on the roster, get them down to the minor league camps, and let them do their thing, and have the guys who deserve spots on this roster be on this team. So uh, we'll cover more about that um, on Monday. We'll get into all of that stuff. The uh, continuous battle for spots on the opening day roster. We're gonna run through it all coming up on Monday. Hey, thanks for making Locked On Cardinals your first listen. Now for your second listen, why don't you check out Locked On Fantasy Baseball? Try to win your league. That's what you want to do, right? By listening to Matt and Dom every day as they bring you the best fantasy draft strategies. You can find Locked On Fantasy Baseball wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. It's part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team. Every day. If you haven't followed us yet on Twitter, we'd appreciate it at LO underscore Cardinals at AJD Sports Radio. Like and subscribe on YouTube to help our channel and love for the Cardinals grow across not only this nation, but the world. I've been loving the fact that I'm getting people from Japan, like liking things and writing things, all because of Lars Nupar, obviously. It's not anything I'm doing, but I think it's cool, man. That's neat to me that I'm reaching people over in Japan who are liking what they're hearing about not only Lars Nupar and Shohei Otani, but also things that we write about the Cardinals uh, over here in the state. So uh, like and subscribe and uh, help the channel grow, please. You're the best fans in baseball for a reason, and I will see you next time on Locked on Cardinals.